Okay, so we're we're back with part two of our uh, look at the uh, ResPad, and here I've got a um, a nice inexpensive Bluetooth keyboard I picked up. I think it was around twenty dollars at one of the uh, big box retail stores. It takes a couple of uh, AAA batteries. And uh, it's got an on off switch there. We're going to leave that off for right now until we get ready. So, hopefully, I'm going to be able to show it to you fairly well on the screen without getting glare or showing, uh, showing a reflection there. And we want to get to where uh, we've turned on Bluetooth and we want to add a device and so I was saying it's handy that you have a uh, touch screen because you can kind of do this right out of the box now I've got some other devices that were in the room and I have taken them out of the room so I'm going to turn on the keyboard the Bluetooth keyboard and see if it shows up here Okay, yeah, so I removed the uh, the other devices that were in the studio with me. I had a couple phones that all had Bluetooth on. And um, that was causing a little bit of trouble there. And um, you also need to kind of read the instructions that comes with your Bluetooth uh, keyboard. I'm sure um, different models might do it different ways. But on, on this particular one, once I switched the... Uh, the keyboard on I had to hold down the function key and press Z um, and then um, it became discoverable so it was just a matter of tapping the device that you want to uh, pair with and then enter a code And we've paired it successfully. So now, in my opinion, that makes it um, a little bit more usable. And I also like, it depending on what I'm doing, but I also like to go ahead and plug in a regular USB mouse. Even though we do have touchscreen, if you're getting into some, um, some fine... Um, motion say like um, you're going to be doing some programming uh, with one of the Python IDEs or you're doing some work with Scratch um, things things work with the touch screen but I found they work better with a mouse so that's my personal um, personal preference is to go ahead and plug in a mouse and I know I've um, done demonstrations uh, previously on some other uh, Raspberry Pi devices with a touchscreen. And it's like, why do you need a keyboard and a mouse? Well, sometimes you just do. And like I said, it's going to be personal preference. So, so that's, uh, that's basically it. That's uh, my overview of the Raspad from SunFounder. Um I think I've covered just a bit about all the basics that get you started. Um, Bluetooth keyboard, maybe a mouse. Um, with the Raspberry Pi 3, you have uh, Wi-Fi on board. Uh, and, of course, uh, enabling Wi-Fi. And you can see some of the uh, Wi-Fi networks in the studio here. And... Um, just my personal preference having the keyboard is actually going to make it a little easier to um, to get connected to Wi-Fi because you're going to have a keyboard to type in the uh, the password for your Wi-Fi. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching. Um, if this was useful and uh, gave you any extra information that you might need, uh, give us a thumbs up and uh, like and subscribe and uh, thanks for stopping by and uh, watching